Hey there gang, Kawaii 50 here with another fake grand order video and it is time to talk about a brand new free servant that is finally going to grace your Chaldea. A servant that has somehow both all pros and all cons. Yes, I am totally talking about Tai Sui Xing Jun. We're going to be going over all of the allies, craft essences, and command codes that will make this servant a fairly valuable alter ego for your team, who you will be getting to NP5, won't you? Please like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that, etc. If you enjoy this video, all of those things would really help me out as we try to get to 10k subs by the end of this year. I would super duper appreciate it. Alright, now that we've done the standard intro, let's go ahead and take a look at this servant. So Tai Sui comes equipped with two quick, two arts, and one buster cards with an AOE arts noble phantasm. Veteran players already kind of know where this is going. The max HP and max attack of this servant is fairly decent, and the NP per hit is a decent refund, further augmented by the fact that we get a guaranteed NP5. Being the servant class that Tai Sui is, the star absorption that he gets is overall average, so stars will flow to his cards if you design them to do so. And speaking of Tai Sui's class, Tai Sui Xingjun is an alter ego servant. I always try to include this for the newer players, but any servant that is any of these extra classes, the alter egos, the avengers, the foreigners, if they show up in a freebie format, you definitely, definitely should get them. Their mere presence will strengthen your account by leaps and bounds, and this free servant is no exception. So please keep that in mind and make sure you finish the Sea Monsters Crisis event to get this servant at NP5. Tai Sui's first skill is Jupiter's Reflection, rank A. This increases Arts card effectiveness and NP gain for all allies by 10 to 20% for three turns. This will also grant Tai Sui an ability where he will gain 5 to 10 critical stars every single turn for three turns. We are going to be leveling this in tandem with Tai Sui's third skill for a couple of reasons. The main reason for the experienced players is because Tai Sui Zing Jun is an arts looper. This is a servant that is going to be able to repeatedly use their arts type noble phantasm to farm with impunity. So we want to level up those three skills in tandem because they both help with Tai Sui's NP refund. They are both very, very good skills and demand priority. Tai Sui's second skill is a skill I'm just going to call Shiro EX, because even if that's not the correct pronunciation, Shiro is my boy. This gives guts to one ally that lasts for three turns to ensure that people won't die when they are killed, applies debuff immunity to that same ally, and increases that ally's buff removal resist. It's a neat little survival tool, but not as potent as the other two skills in Tai Sui's kit, so make sure you go ahead and level this last. And Tai Sui's final skill is Ominous God Rank A. This skill seals every single enemy, meaning they can't use any of their skills. It also, more importantly, increases Tai Sui's Noble Phantasm Strength by 20 to 30% for three turns and grants an immediate 20 to 30% NP steroid. This is incredibly powerful, especially on a servant who can use their AoE Noble Phantasm repeatedly. Like I said with the first one, in case you weren't entirely paying attention, level this skill in tandem with the first skill. Tai Sui's most important append skills are his first and second if you're running low on servant coins. Extra attack boost is great on any servant that is going to try to be chaining. Tai Sui is of course going to be trying to arts chain so that he can go ahead and get as much NP refund as possible in the event the Noble Phantasm alone isn't enough to charge, which it might be if you're not running the optimal supporters. So make sure you go ahead and sink into this skill for the extra damage, stars, and NP gain. Low magical energy is great on every single character in the game. Tai Sui Xing Jun is no exception, and with an included up to 30% NP steroid, combine that with this skill, that is an immediate 50% Noble Phantasm turn 1, and that opens up a lot of options for 50% charge craft essences. So it gives Tai Sui a little bit of flexibility if you don't just want to be running something like a kaleidoscope on him forever. And speaking of things that utilize kaleidoscopes, let's take a look at Tai Sui Xing Jun's Noble Phantasm.
Now, this is honestly one of those really interesting noble phantasms to me. It does a lot and is versatile enough that this works in both a farming and a single target enemy situation, as long as there are additional mini enemies with the boss. Taisui Awakens inflicts an on-death debuff to all enemies. When those enemies are defeated, all of the target's allies get a 20% defense reduction, they all get cursed, and they all take additional curse damage. Curse damage, which of course is applied with the Noble Phantasm as well. On Overcharge, this deals super effective damage against human type enemies. This isn't nearly as important for general farming as the rest of the things attached to this Noble Phantasm, but it is something to consider if you're the type of person that looks up their enemy types before they go onto a stage. The important thing is that defense reductions do stack in Fake Grand Order, so if you're fighting a big boss enemy with quite a few little enemies accompanying them and you manage to defeat them with Taisui's Noble Phantasm, that boss is going to get a crazy three turn debuff allowing the team to deal quite a bit of additional damage to them because their defense will be severely reduced now something to keep in mind is that this means that this noble phantasm isn't necessarily going to be as effective against one big single boss you might want to bring along somebody else instead but if that boss ends up having friends taisui shinjun is going to punish them for doing so so let's talk allies. Oh look, another arts farming servant. That means Castoria is going to be the name of the game. By and far, even on JP to this day, Castoria is one of the best servants in the entire game and the de facto queen of the arts supporters. So Castoria, if you got her, she's going to be making another appearance alongside Taisui Xingjun. There are, of course, other options to pair with this servant. If you're looking to lean into the curse damage aspect of the Noble Phantasm, Taisui can be a great free-to-play pairing along with Van Gogh, who thrives off of her enemies being cursed. This is a great way to add additional curses on your opponent to make use of Van Gogh's special abilities to utilize those curses for her benefit. Another great freebie option to pair with Taisui's Shingjun would be Salome. Salome does have the ability to curse. I'm mainly recommending her here as a more freebie option that is readily available for a lot of newer players. She is very, very squishy, and more often than not, if you are a Salome maniac, you're mainly using her as your main damage dealer. But it did bear mentioning. Also, of course, Ashia Domen is worth mentioning when it comes to a curse team, but since Taisui Xingjun is neither chaotic nor evil, there isn't really going to be a way to make use of Domen's special chaotic evil buffs. This is just mainly going to give Domen another outlet to cause curses on his enemies. So let's talk craft essences. Are you Lupin? I'm sure you're Lupin, son. So that means Kaleidoscope is going to be a great pick. Starting 80 to 100% MP gauge, if you have this max limit broken, this craft essence remains a powerhouse to this day. And the only craft essence that even somewhat competes with it is basically another Kaleidoscope that we'll be getting in the future. Freebie options for Taisui Xingjun, of course, are many. So if you don't have a K-scope, don't fret. Painting Summer is absolutely worth mentioning despite its mixed stats. This is a 50% starting in P gauge. So if you've invested enough in the Servant to get that max append, get that max third skill, that's an easy starting 100% in P gauge. And the Arts Card Effectiveness and NP gain are going to help with that Noble Phantasm refund. Mission Start is another great recommendation since Taisui's two main cards are Quick Cards and Arts Cards. This is a Quick Card, Arts Card, and Critical Strength boost to Taisui's Jingjun, and this also grants a starting 40 to 50 percent NP gauge which works well in the same vein as painting summer but Taisui's best craft essence that isn't K-Scope actually shows up in the same event that Taisui Jingjun showed up in. Star's Day Off grants Quick Card Effectiveness, Arts Card Effectiveness, and NP Strength, and grants that starting 30 to 50% NP gauge. In a perfect world where you've got a max appended Taisui Jingjun with a level 10 third skill, I would actually recommend picking this as the premier option. Yes, it does end up having mixed stats, I feel like those are fine on an Alter Ego, where the Alter Ego is taking, you know, not nearly as much damage as some other Servant classes, but you get that 50% starting NP gauge, you get that Arts Card Effectiveness, and that NP Strength helps push into Overcharge, which ends up regaining your NP. 
And if you don't end up getting all of the Noble Phantasm refund off of that overkill, well, you still at least get the stars from the increased quick card effectiveness to feed those into your arts cards on the next turn, and hopefully get enough then to Noble Phantasm again. And finally, let's go over command codes. On those arts cards, we are going to want Stargather. Tai Sui Jing Jun has a decent overall star weight. We are going to want to have those stars flow into those arts cards whenever possible in order to get that refund. So Inexperienced Fantasy Command Seal is a great pick specifically for arts card Stargather. You can also give Tai Sui a more generalist pick like Armament of Triumph to draw stars to that arts card. When it comes to the Buster cards, and we talked about this recently on the support review stream, Buster cards are great options for Noble Phantasm Strength Boost. You don't necessarily want to put it on an Arts card, because if you're placing an Arts card in front of a Noble Phantasm, you are missing out on any sort of potential ability to use that refund. It's just not necessarily going to work as well as placing it after the Noble Phantasm. But if we have our Noble Phantasm damage bonuses on our Buster card, we can use that Buster card in the first slot, get quite a bit of damage from it, increase the damage of our hopefully Arts card that is following up at the end of the chain, and maybe overall defeat our enemy to get quite a bit of refund. Da Vinci is an excellent pick for the Buster cards. Any sort of NP damage boost is great, but Da Vinci is especially stellar as a Noble Phantasm damage booster. If you don't want to give Tai Sui Jing Jun any of your precious NP damage boosting command codes, the other best option would be just filtering as much critical damage onto those Buster cards as possible. Buster cards do damage, so let's make them do even more. Code Burst is going to be your best freebie option for this. Any specific critical damage command code is great as a general option. Just don't give those Buster cards Star Gather. I know it seems counterintuitive, but trust me, you'll thank me for it later. And when it comes to Tai Sui's two quick cards, we are going to use those to gain more stars to fuel our Noble Phantasm and our Arts Crits. So Code Glitter is going to be your best freebie option. Any star generating CE. No, sorry, C, C, man, I get those mixed up all the time, ends up working great with Tai Sui Jing Jun. Overall, gang, Tai Sui Jing Jun is a pretty great arts farming servant and ends up being a solid freebie alter ego option for those that might not have been lucky to pull one. The problem is, when it comes to this year, there are a lot of very powerful arts farming servants that are coming out, and we actually do have a lot of powerful arts farming servants that were released previously in the game. So if you already have a super powerful arts farmer, Tai Sui Xing Jun isn't necessarily going to go ahead and give you anything that you don't already have. To give another freebie example, if you end up having Sieg from the Fate Apocrypha event way, way back when, uh, not necessarily going to offer you anything that Sieg doesn't already offer you. They kind of do the same thing mechanically if you're going into farming. However, if you really need an alter ego servant, you just like the well-written Sea Monster Crisis event, or, you know, you just really like the character. None of this can go wrong, especially considering you're not spending any gacha on this character. I think Tai Sui Jing Jun is a worthwhile addition to your team. So, absolutely worth picking up. And you better pick him up at NP5. But of course, I want to know what you all think. Let me know your thoughts on Tai Sui Jing Jun down in the comments section below. Let me know if there are any allies, craft essences, or command codes you think I might have missed. And let me know if Tai Sui was your favorite part of the Sea Monster event, or if you were quite more partial to Hai Ba Shu. I was actually quite partial to Hai Ba Shu myself. They were very, very good characters, and I hope they show up more in the future. As you head down to the comment section to share your thoughts, be sure to check out the Discord, the Patreon, and the Ko-fi. Huge thanks to everyone on all those platforms for all of their support. I really do appreciate any support all of you can provide. Thank you so much, especially to you right now for watching to the end of this video. That absolutely means the most. Thank you very much. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next one.